Happy New Year! On Acoustic Tuesday, episode 71, you're gonna listen to a folk duo that may sound vaguely familiar, learn about a simple solution for guitar-induced tendinitis and overall wrist pain, and go through an exercise that will help you achieve all of your guitar goals for 2019. All that and more right after this. If you believe that playing acoustic guitar is about sharing the joy of music with friends and family, not just mastering the technical side of playing, then this show is your dream come true. Every Tuesday morning, I give you my list of exciting guitar geek discoveries, gear, and new music so you can stay inspired to live your best acoustic life. I'm Tony Castro, and this is the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Guitar geeks, unite. Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 71, our very first episode of the year 2019. This is the show where you're gonna learn about acoustic guitar gear, discover acoustic artists, and get inspired to live your very best acoustic life. And as with all episodes of Acoustic Tuesday, I'm gonna go through my guitar geek list for the week. Now, I'm excited about this particular episode because it's our chance to go into 2019 as new and improved versions of ourselves. And speaking of new and improved, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you to the new and improved version of Sir Noah Jacob Heckman Jr. the first. Noah? Hey, Tony. Hi, buddy. Where, where are you at right now? Man, I'm in outer space. Yeah? Yeah. You're seeing comets and this is meteors? Awesome. This is awesome. This is a very... Um, that's cute, Noah. That's oh. a cute, uh, <laughs> cute video game you got there. Sorry, let me get out no. of this <laughs> How awesome was that? That that was uh, actually like you're in Levi's Christmas gift to me. Well, this year I, you you got me a VR mask. Well, it's because you started talking about that movie or book, Ready Player One. Oh man! And then yeah. you just went down the, the the dark black hole of virtual reality and all things futuristic. Well, you know, my kids brought it up and they told me about Ready Player One. You know, as the kids are these days into the video gaming and all. Um, <laughs> And I, too, you know, have a little bit of history with some video gameage. See, but I'm a book guy. Okay, so, okay. So if I find out that a movie came from a book, I'm not even going to go there. I got to read the book. So I ended up reading the book, and it ended up being, it's my favorite book of all time in my whole life. <laughs> end of story. The book was written for me. The end. So there you go. Well, I'm glad that uh, you uh, took some time out of your virtual reality to come into actual reality and hang out with us guitar geeks. Uh, Happy New Year's to you. Thank you, and Happy New Year to you. Well, thank you. Uh, You know, today is a special day because it is the first day of uh, 2019, but it's also the Winter Classic Day, Mm -hmm. meaning that the Chicago Blackhawks are going to take on the Boston Bruins in an outdoor hockey game. I encourage encourage all of you, rather, to join in and watch, as I will be uh, later today. I'm super excited, hence my attire. It's my they, Crawford jersey. They will be wearing the same thing, or he will be wearing the same well, thing. Well, he will be watching on the sidelines because he got a concussion recently, Ooh. which is a bummer because that's what sidelined him last season, and it's happening it happening in this season. So that's – you never want to see anybody uh, have that. You never want to see that happen to anybody. So I'm hoping for a good, fast recovery for Corey Crawford and also for the entire Blackhawks organization since they can't pull it together <laughs> this year. But that is not on the topic of guitar. We need to dive into the Guitar Geek list. And kicking things off today is an exercise that I want to lead you through that will help you achieve all of your goals for the year 2019. Now, there's going to be an extended version of this exercise that I'll tell you how to access here in a second. But rather than tell you that right off the bat, I want to walk you through a very condensed version of this exercise because it's a great thing to do because it is New Year's Day. Happy New Year to you, by the way. So. What I want to do is first uh, share with you some thoughts on the importance of reflection and setting an intention. These are really the, the, the linchpins to experiencing progress on the guitar and being grateful for the progress that you have experienced and cultivating enough momentum and positivity to continue achieving your goals, okay? You want to reflect. That's why we talk about small wins all the time. You want to reflect on the progress you've experienced thus far, and you want to set intentions so you know where to go once you have a chance to sit down with your guitar. So with that being our theme, Let's reflect and set some intentions for the year 2019. But first, before we dive into 2019, let's reflect on 2018. So I want you to grab a piece of paper. It could be a small piece of paper, a big piece of paper, the back of an envelope, something that can actually fit in your guitar case though, if you fold it up, okay? And I want you to write down three things 
that you were grateful for in your acoustic life for the year 2018. Okay, just three things minimum. Okay, if you have more that you wanna write down, please do that, that that's great. Uh, and while you're thinking of yours, I'm gonna actually share with you my three things that I'm grateful for, uh, for my acoustic life in 2018. In fact, I'm so fortunate because we kind of get to share our acoustic life with all of you viewers. So a lot of my uh, things that I'm grateful for have to do with you. Uh, the first one was getting to see some amazing personal transformations at the Acoustic Life Festival in 2018. And I'm talking, people showed up for the festival here in Bozeman and they had never played in front of people before, they had never played on stage, they had never even thought that they could do it. And in just a matter of two days, they were on stage, under lights, playing songs to their guitar geek friends. And that was just a, a treat to witness and uh, just an extremely powerful experience. So I'm very grateful for that. Uh, the second thing that I'm grateful for in uh, 2018 has to do with you and you viewers helping to grow the Acoustic Life YouTube channel to 180,000 subscribers, over 180,000 subscribers. And you all know that the whole mission of Acoustic Tuesday is to unite guitar geeks and holy smokes, we are uniting guitar geeks. You and I, Noah, everybody that watches Acoustic Tuesday. So thank you for that. I'm super grateful for that. And last and certainly not least, and probably the most impactful We'll file this under the contribution category. You Acoustic Tuesday viewers are responsible for helping to donate a grand total, a grand total of $29,143 to the Guitars for Vets organization uh, in the year 2018. That includes all contributions from AcousticLife.tv. That includes contributions from the Acoustic Life Festival held back in June of 2018. And that includes donations from our Memorial Day fundraiser, um, the TAC for Vets fundraiser that we did just a couple months ago. So that is pretty staggering. And those are three things that, <clears throat> excuse me, I am extremely grateful for. So now that you have your three things listed down, uh, go ahead in the comments if you feel like sharing them. Uh, please share what you're grateful for for 2018. What, looking back, what are you grateful for? It could be something small, it could be something big, it could be something in between, whatever the case, we wanna know. And since we're writing down things right now, I want you to look forward into 2019. And I want you to list three things that you want the guitar and your acoustic life to bring you in 2019. What do you want your acoustic life to look like in 2019? Just list three things, three goals that you may have, three scenarios you wanna find yourself in, and while you're thinking and writing down, I'll share with you three of mine. So three things for 2019 that I want my acoustic life to hold are the following. First, I wanna play music for a local retirement home or memory assistance facility at least once per quarter. Right, so once every three months, I wanna donate my time and go to uh, a retirement home or a memory assistance facility and play music uh, to those folks. Because I think so often, personally, I get focused on, oh, I'm gonna play a gig at the local brewery, I'm gonna play a gig at the local distillery or whatever the case may be. And uh, I, wanna, I wanna play music that has a really meaningful impact and I wanna, have, uh, I wanna have folks really enjoy it and have it mean a lot for them. And I think that's a great place to start. So that's one of my goals for 2019. The other one, or I should say the second one, is to make this year's Guitars for Vets donation amount double what it was last year. And in doing so, I wanna increase awareness uh, for the Guitars for Vets program. I think that program makes such a huge impact on people's lives, allowing them to actually experience that healing power of music. Uh, I, wanna, I wanna make uh, as big of an impact as I possibly can, and of course, uh, I can't do that alone. You guys help a ton. You guys and gals help a ton. So I want to thank you for that. And of course, that's where we're headed in 2019. And then uh, last but certainly not least, and this is a really exciting one because this definitely falls under the category of directly uh, Acoustic Tuesday. I want to take it Acoustic Tuesday, again, with your help, uh, to the next level. We've got some ideas for new segments, new guests, and even some new sets. Uh, in fact, beside me, there's a set uh, uh, under construction right now. So 2019, uh, Acoustic Tuesday in 2019 is gonna go on some detours and take some really important new creative forms. So I'm super excited about that. So that's a, those are a couple things that I'm, I wanna see out of my acoustic life in 2019. And hopefully you've got a good list in front of you right now. And if you feel like sharing any of those, please do so in the comments below. Now, as I mentioned, 
reflecting and setting intentions is is so important. It helps keeps uh, it helps to keep the guitar rut at bay. It helps uh, develop a solid playing habit. And uh, most importantly, it starts to help you tap into the why you're playing, the big reason why you're playing. Not just to play fiery licks and cool solos, but really the, the deep meaning as to why you play. So that, that reflection, the self-reflection and that setting an intention is so, so crucial. In fact, it's one of the main tenets of the Tony's Acoustic Challenge philosophy. And if this type of stuff resonates with you, I want you to check out Tony's Acoustic Challenge because it's this very philosophy that guides us. So please go to Tony'sAcousticChallenge.com. It's an acoustic guitar program like you've never seen before, like you've never experienced, and I guarantee you that will help take your playing to the next level. So go ahead, again, go to Tony's Acoustic challenge.com. Read all about it. And if it sounds like uh, something that you want to pursue, please request your invite today. We'd absolutely love to have you. And speaking of that exercise, I mentioned that there was an extended version of that exercise. I call it the Acoustic Lifestyle Design Exercise, and there's actually a full version of that at AcousticLife.tv. Just go to AcousticLife.tv forward slash AT71, and you'll be able to go through the entire Acoustic Lifestyle Design Exercise. And I'll tell you what, it really will start to zoom you into your purpose in playing the guitar and, and how fulfilling it truly can be. So please check that out and uh, let's move on down the line. I've got a lot of fun stuff here. In fact, I've got a really exciting small one that I can't wait to share with you all, um, but we're not there yet. So first, uh, your Guitar Geek trivia question. Here is your Guitar Geek trivia question for the day. In what year did Bob Dylan release his very first album? Was it A, 1959, B, 1960, C, 1962, or D, 1966? Go ahead and ponder that, and at the end of the show, I will be sure to give you the answer. Now, uh, I have a great artist that I cannot wait for you all to hear, one that caught me by surprise because I had never heard of them before, but before we do that, I gotta look in the mailbag because we've got some really cool stuff. I know last week's episode was our Christmas episode, and uh, both uh, Don and Joe from Helena dropped off some gifts, and I have to share these with you all because this is just too cool. Uh, they got me a, a nice tall bourbon glass that says, that's what I do. I drink and I know things. So this was absolutely perfect. And they found a pic, now there's a little post-it note for this, uh, it says, for you or the pic wall? Too unique to pass up. Happy happy holidays, Joe and Don. And this is a sterling silver pic with kind of like a, a hand-done Navajo design in there. So I thought that was pretty rad, and we'll put that on the pic wall. I'll put it in the pic cup for now. Noah still hasn't... Um, pick up? He, he, <laughs> Noah still hasn't uh, gotten us our cork board yet. <clears throat> I thought that was on your list, but... Um, I guess, um, well, I guess maybe that, maybe that just hasn't you know I, I apologize. <laughs> you know I just I just happened I was busy with stuff. I see you found the mm -hmm. t-shirt store. You got a cool new t-shirt. Oh man, but... yes. I'm glad you bring this up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Whitney's been listening to them a lot lately. Greta Van a Fleet. A lot, a lot. If you haven't heard them, check them out. Uh, I would say, wouldn't you say they're they're very circa 19. 70s or like yeah early. i mean I'll, I'll say the obvious i think i think everybody has heard it if you haven't heard these guys it's, they're like led zeppelin reincarnate but but not but not okay i yeah. think that's the that's the thing i don't think they're trying to copy led zeppelin mm -hmm. i just think that that's the sound that they're after and they absolutely nail it they're they're a killer band so great t-shirt choice so. yeah thank you for noticing maybe next time on your rounds you could you could pick up that cork board that i've been asking for yeah or i could tell you this real quick uh <laughs> I picked up the shirt and I showed my daughter uh -huh. and she goes, is that a Greta Van Fleet t-shirt? And I said, yeah. She goes, darn, I picked you for my secret Santa and I was looking at what to get you and I asked mom if I should get you a Greta Van Fleet t-shirt. So I ruined my daughter's <laughs> gift that she was going to give me. <laughs> I've got a great story along those lines, but maybe I'll save that for a little bit later okay. in the show. It involves Ace of Bass. Ooh. Okay. I'll just, I'll just say that. Okay. Uh, next thing in the mailbag was just a really kind holiday card from Tammy and crew, the, the gal that comes to our, our studio and, and helps us keep things tidy once mm -hmm. a month. Yep. We always joke because I have, to, I have to clean before she gets here because my desk is always a mess. Yeah. Um, and the next, okay, okay, first of all, I, there's a lot of stuff here. Uh, we got 
so there's a story. We got these cho- this box of chocolates showed up, Noah. <laughs> yeah. And um, you told me about these. They're, yeah, they're C's candies. And uh, this little box showed up, and and this box of truffles showed up. This big box. And we also have some lollipops. Uh, and then there was a big box of assorted chocolates that was here on Friday. I wasn't but, here. Uh, it it's gone. It's gone. And uh, Levi and his daughters came into the studio over the weekend and decided that it was time for some chocolates. Mm. So they're kicking off 2019 with a full box of assorted chocolates that I'm sure tastes wonderful. I didn't even get a chance to taste them. Uh, so hopefully they enjoyed them. Yeah, I, did, I didn't even see the box. I, I knew, You didn't even see it, poor guy. Ah, well, that Levi, he just snuck in here and just brought it home. Now, uh, I want to thank whoever sent these to us. I looked, I scoured, I could not find a note anywhere. So whomever sent us the the chocolates that Levi and his family are now enjoying, I want to thank you. Levi wants to thank you. And Noah and I will have these tiny boxes here. Uh, <laughs> and then a very guitar-related thing came in the mailbag. It was a note. First, let me show you what came in. So these showed up. And I thought to myself, guitar next, what are the, what's happening here? So now this one has the entire fretboard. The notes are actually printed on the fretboard. I thought, that's cool. I wonder if this is a sample of something for, for me to try from, from a, a vendor or something. Because a lot of times stuff will show up. And then this showed up. Same box. It's a, it's a Taylor neck with the Acoustic Life logo printed on the fretboard. I mean, it's really cool. It's our logo. And I thought, man, this is way cool. So then I opened the letter, and it all came clear. It all came to uh, fruition. It all came... Uh, no, it all came clear. It, it all came to be clear is what yes. I meant. And this is from Rick. He says, Tony, Noah, Levi, I love what you guys have started. My name is Rick, and I have been following the, the Guitar Geek unification for quite a, wh- quite a while now. If you, can't already, if you can't already tell by the guitar necks I sent in, I, too, am an immense guitar geek. Before I explain about the necks, I wanted to thank you for taking the time to do the show. I know I'm not the only one who loves tuning in on Tuesdays. Truly awesome content. Knowing the show's appreciation for the visual side of music, I customized these guitar necks for the team. The electric guitar neck has the entire fretboard wrapped in a blue printed wood grain vinyl with every note for a standard tuned guitar printed just above the fret. The print has a matte laminate for protection and a smoother, more silky feel. The only inlay in the fret in this fretboard are the side dots. This guitar neck is one of Amazon's cheaper replacement neck option. The Taylor neck is the same concept as the electric guitar neck with a few exemptions. The wood grain is more of a black color. The side inlay are gold and chrome. And the main design, the Acoustic Life logo, is inlaid instead of printed. I was able to get my hands on this neck through, through diligent eBay mon monitoring and was ecstatic when it came up for auction. Unfortunately, the original dot inlay was either damaged or built in a subpar fashion. You'll notice a few of the inlay dots are actually recessed into the fretboard, leaving an uneven surface. I considered the baking soda super glue trick to patch them up, but decided the best bet was to leave it as is. If you'd like to see more about the service, please check out customfrets.com. Also, if you're considering putting this in the show, I have a demonstration where I play on my own customized guitar neck if you're interested. So I want to thank Rick for the very cool guitar necks and uh, exposing me to a brand new product that I'll dig into and check out. So that that's what was in the mailbag. Now, something else came in the mailbag, but I'm going to save that. I'm going to save that for later. Noah? What? Mailbag items? Um, no. <laughs> Okay, moving on. <laughs> okay, so this next, uh, what I'm listening to this week comes a courtesy of Glenn Webster. Now, Glenn Webster says that we have to listen to Clay, Clay Parker and Jody James. And yes, everybody actually has to stop what they're doing right now and listen to Clay Parker and Jody James. I've been listening to them all week. I have been just completely enthralled with their sound, their harmonies. They're dynamic as a duo. Now, this is a folk duo. They met in 2009, uh, kind of floating around the Baton Rouge, Louisiana music scene, but they formed their official duo in 2014. And uh, just to get us all on the same page, let's listen to their tune, Gallows Tree, and then I'll gush more about this wonderful duo. You can never tell what to make of the music. When you led to the road and left no clues With tender skin and a black and bruise Walking all around with a boot heel blues I tell you the truth if you'll take it from me up for hire gonna work for free 
So don't be surprised when you go and see What they're hauling down to the gallows tree all right, so that was the tune Gallows Tree by Clay Parker and Jody James. Don't make the mistake that I continue to make. I always want to say Clyde Parker, and I don't know why. I think it's because I, I think it's because Jody has a D in it, and somehow I mash the two names together. Isn't isn't there a Clyde Park? There is a Clyde Park, Montana. Maybe that's why. That's what I think it is. Okay, well, let's yeah. not confuse matters. Okay, so it's it's Clay Parker and Jody James. Uh, now, they have two albums out as a duo. Uh, the first one that came out is their self-titled EP, which contains uh, the tune Moonshiner on it, which I thought, I think this is a wonderful version of a, of a classic traditional folk tune. I think their, their phrasing and their harmonies are intoxicating on this particular version of the tune. Uh, and then their uh, most recent studio album, The Lonesomest Sound That Can Sound. And I want to say, so when I first heard these, these two, I thought, man, this is very Gillian, Wal Gillian Welch and David Rawlings. And, and I think it is. I think, I think they do a great job of cultivating that folk Americana duo. But I feel like their roots are just all over the place. There's some really bluesy songs. I even gather some John Prine out of uh, one, one song in particular that they sing has the same kind of cadence and, and, and whatnot of a John Prine song. So I just, I, I think they're fantastic. I am, I am so pleased to know of their music and listen to it. I also wanna mention that Clay Parker has a couple solo albums out. Uh, the first one he released is uh, called Any Old Time. And then the second one released uh, in 2017 is called Queen City Blues. And uh, those are fantastic as well. So uh, please check those guys out. They're a, a, I think they're a musical treasure that needs to be uh, listened to uh, by all of us guitar geeks. So make sure to check them out. Learn more about them at acousticlife.tv forward slash AT71. Uh, there's bonus performances there and also links to purchase their albums and whatnot. And remember those, those links on acousticlife.tv, those are referral links, meaning that if you use those links to buy something, we get a percentage of those sales. And then we take that percentage and then go ahead and donate to Guitars for Vets on behalf of all the guitar geeks that watch Acoustic Tuesday. So uh, make sure to uh, check them out. I think your ears will be smiling. I know your ears will be smiling. And uh, we wanna know what you think of the show so far. So please, in the comments below, let us know uh, what you intend, what your goals are for 2019. Let us know what you're grateful for for 2018. Let us know what you think of the show. Let us know where you're tuning in from. What I'm trying to say is just please leave a comment. And while you're doing so, if you think to yourself, man, I haven't subscribed to the Acoustic Life YouTube channel yet, uh, please do so. It's really easy, click that red subscribe button. And then don't forget to click that little gray bell. That'll give you a notification each and every time uh, a new video gets released. Now, Noah, yes, Tony. Um, I don't know if you can see, I don't know what world you're in right now, but uh, there were some comments that you found yes. that you want to share. Yes. Yeah. I want to share some comments. Okay. Can you read through those or can you, what's happening? Right yes, now? I can, I can see through them. I, I got this set up so that it, <laughs> I look very cool right now. Oh yeah. In my VR goggles. Certainly. So comments and shout outs. Uh, first one today goes to uh, Davy Joe W. He says, great show, guys. Good info and geeky wisdom. And Noah, uh, I too did a DNA test, only to find out that I am 54% UK background. And you, having royal kin, I think it is necessary to refer to you as the royal guitar geeky maintenance engineer, me royal lad. <laughs> and, I, and I bet you me be a cousin for sure. <laughs> and then I wonder what a pizza would turn out. <laughs> Let me start that again. I wonder what a pizza would turn out as while listening to bagpipes. Thank you kindly, Tony and Royal Noah, Davy Joe in Pennsylvania. <laughs> okay. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Next one uh, comes or goes, shout out goes to Don. It says, hey guys, uh, watch Thursday from Boston, Massachusetts. All right. Enjoyed the show as always, which of course is why I keep watching. And then he says, a sonance alert for alliteration alert. So is, quote, Guitar Geek Guardian of the Galaxy, end quote, going to be a Jack Black movie? <laughs> do, you, do you think that tossing a caber and tossing a pizza require the same arm and body motions? Oh. And he says, I also like the extra tidbits and info coming from your teaching segments. Oh, cool. And if you happen to be taking a poll, I play the finger picker G chord a great majority of the time with occasional forays into the bar chord land. Um, I guess mostly because I finger pick. Awesome. Um, and I had to mention that because I, for one... Uh, I, I, I can appreciate, I, I think Jack Black is a talented fella. Oh, absolutely. And, 
And Singing, playing. Yeah. Hilarious. Yeah. Kung Fu Panda. I mean, come on. All right. Next shout out goes to Randy W. He says, great show today as always. Uh, one of today's small wins reminded me uh, once about 25 years ago at a festival, I got to see Steve Kaufman and Mark O'Connor on stage together, oh, wow. uh, trading lead back and forth. What an experience. I couldn't decide if I was inspired to practice more or just give up and burn my guitar. <laughs> I'm, I'm still playing, though. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I think we all have that moment. Yeah, when you see somebody. At some point. I mean, when, when, I, saw, when I saw Trey and Rob play at last year's Acoustic Life Festival. Yes. That was a moment where I was like, jaw on the floor. In fact, I came into the studio <laughs> the, the, the next week after the Acoustic Life Festival, and I'm over on my guitar. I'm like, dee, 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 trying to go super fast. <laughs> and Noah's like, that's not like Trey. That's and, not at all like yeah. Trey. I knew I exactly like, I what know. you were doing. I, know. I knew what you were doing. <laughs> <I know. laughs> all right, Tony, just a couple more here. Yeah. Uh, shout outs and small ca- comments uh, to the Klaga. Uh, good evening from Oxford, England. All right. And Conrad S., good evening from Germany, Stuttgart. Stay simple, be acoustic. All right. I like that. And there Stay you go. Stay simple, be acoustic. That's part. That's where my ancestry traces back to, apparently. Oh, that's right. We yeah. haven't even touched on that. I know. It's like a whole, I mean, it's a whole new year. Wow. So I found out I'm like 14% Italian. And the majority of my ancestry, I want to say like in the 40%, 41%, I think, is French and German. French and German. So I said this to my dad, and I I sent him the picture of everything, and this is the the results from the DNA test or whatever. And he says, I'm pretty sure that's a government conspiracy. Where did the French come in? (laughs) Yeah. And uh, I don't don't know. That's what what it said. Yeah. And And I'm fascinated by it. Yeah, and I was saying that... uh, it, it kind of makes sense because a couple things you always say around here is one is you need to be nicer uh, and two, that you need to take a shower. But <laughs> <laughs> Wow. All right, Noah, Jacob Heckman Jr., the first. Yes. Happy 2019 to you, too. And to you. <laughs> but I did find out uh, through this DNA testing that actually Noah is the most Neanderthal of the entire office. So that's kind of cool. We didn't discuss this part. You, we- <laughs> you didn't say you were going to bring Neanderthal up. <laughs> Anyways, I should move on. Yes. Are, were you through? I'm sorry. I, I was through. Yes, off. yes. That was comments for today. Okay. Uh, well, moving on to my next item here. So often as guitar players, we experience wrist pain, tendonitis, maybe even carpal tunnel syndrome, just from that repetitive motion. I mean, you think about what you're what you're doing with guitar, whether you're finger picking or flat picking and fretting in and of itself. These are these are absolute feats by our hand. They're feats by our hands. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Uh, but there's so many muscles at play, and there's so much repetitive motion that. Injuries are, are of pretty high likelihood. So um, I got this product in. They sent it to me to check out. And as with all the products that I, I uh, review on Acoustic Tuesday, we get sent a ton of stuff here. And uh, it's all sent under the agreement that, hey, if I dig it and I think guitar players would benefit, I'll certainly include it in the show. And if it doesn't really meet my criteria or if I don't think it's very beneficial, I won't include it in the show. That's that's it. That's the bottom line. So these came in and while I don't have an immediate need for them personally, I can see how they could help so many guitarists because wrist pain is a thing that happens to us, right? Carpal tunnel syndrome, tendonitis, any sort of strain on our wrist. Now I tried these out. What are these? These are wrist grips. These were developed, I'm going to get these names right here. These were developed by Ryan Soleil and Gabe Castro in Portland, Oregon, to alleviate problems uh, from playing, from repetitive motion, whether you're drumming or or playing guitar. And essentially, they just sit on your wrist. Uh, Let me just pop this one on here. And it just offers some stability around your wrist so that you can actually, it it feels like you have, uh, it almost like added strength. I, I don't know how to describe it other than added strength. And I was trying to figure out why these worked, and luckily on their uh, website, there's a video explaining why compression treatment works. So let's have a look at that, and then I'll come back and uh, share with you my experience of these particular wrist grips. Specific to the wrist, it can be helpful, again, to clear inflammatory chemicals, but also to stabilize the radius and the ulna together so that the intricate wrist bones can 
work ideally um, because with repetitive stress situation, oftentimes there will be some laxity, a little bit of looseness that will develop in the tendons and the ligaments. And so shoring, helping to shore up the area with a compression brace can make all the difference in the smooth operating of that joint. Now, I went into trying these not having any wrist pain. So I'm gonna actually share with you what my experience was without any wrist pain. And it was this. I found that these offered an incredible amount of stability to both my picking and fretting hand. I used them on both, there's two, right? They come in sets of two. And I, I can't really explain it, but I felt like uh, I fatigued less. I fatigued less and had more stamina. Um, and all because I just felt like I was more stable. Uh, I was able to, my, my arm still didn't really have any tension, but just this added uh, uh, firmness around my wrist really helped uh, uh, control and it helped overall stamina. So I was impressed as a, as a healthy user of these. And if you have any tendonitis or carp carpal tunnel issues, uh, things that prevent you from playing guitar for a long period of time, I would try these out. Um, I think this could this could be a huge boon for, for that player that's just like, man, I'm so frustrated, I can't play because it hurts. Uh, I would definitely try these out. I think for minimal investment, uh, this would be worth your time. And if your experience was anything like mine, uh, I think you'll notice a difference for sure. Uh, so you can learn more about wrist grips at acousticlife.tv forward slash AT71. Uh, check out their website. They got a bunch of helpful videos out there. And uh, I just think, I think this is brilliant. I think this is really cool because so often we talk about wrist pain and ways to avoid it, but what happens when you're already a little bit too late? And I think these can be a big help. So again, these are wrist grips uh, developed in Portland, Oregon. And uh, learn more at acousticlife.tv forward slash AT71. Now, Noah, Yes. Usually we just launch right into small wins, but right. I'm going to actually share a small win before yes. we launch into small wins. Yes. Uh, because I was recently in Chicago. Mm -hmm. This is where I picked up this fine piece of Chicago Blackhawks memorabilia. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was there with my son, and obviously Whitney came with. And one of the trips, one of our, our rituals is to go to Chicago Music Exchange and just gawk at all the amazing guitars. Uh, because Aiden, my son, he's a guitar player. He's a big fan of, uh, he's got his eyes on Gibson Les Paul right now. So he's got great taste. Let me just say that. Um, <laughs> but we went to Chicago Music Exchange, took the took the Brown Line out to the Polina stop, got off, walked over to the Chicago Music Exchange, went to a, a great restaurant right next to it before going uh, called Frasca, F-R-A-C-S-F-R-A-S-C-A. -A -A. Great pizza, good beer, good Bloody Marys. Just wanted to mention that. Uh, but we went to Chicago Music Exchange. I had no intentions on getting a guitar. No intentions. But it's not often you can go to a showroom and play multiple years of the same instrument. Now, I've had my eyes on a single 018. I've liked the idea of a Martin single 018 for quite a long time. But I've never had the chance to try a bunch of them. Well, I finally was able to try a bunch of them. And I gotta, I gotta share with you guys what I got. Now, Whitney was very kind. She gave me the green light on this. She was there with me. I didn't even have to sneak it home. It's a 1958 uh, single 018, and it's in great shape. It's got the classic Martin pick crack, but it's just, uh, oh, it smells good. It's just got, it's got the classic vibe. It's just great. It's just a great sounding finger picker and uh, actually really great flat picker too. But so that's what I picked up in Chicago. Now I didn't bring it home with me. I bought the guitar. It's the weirdest feeling to purchase a guitar and leave the store without said guitar in hand. But uh, Chicago Music Exchange, of course, I was in Chicago. I didn't really want to fly with it because I didn't have a flight case. So they said, hey, we'll ship it to your, your studio. I said, awesome, this is great. Uh, so they shipped it to the studio. And here's where the story gets, gets awesome because I wanted, this is, this is kind of where the small end uh, lies. And I wanted to share this with all of you because I think, it's, I think it'll help ease nerves. You know, when you buy a guitar and you have it shipped to your house or wherever, there's always that, man, is the guitar gonna be okay in transit? And I think, 
Chicago Music Exchange goes to such incredible lengths to make sure that the shipping process is as anxiety free as possible. Uh, I was just blown away. I was super, super impressed. So this box came in and on the box, it's got this thing called a shock indicator. And I had never seen anything like this before. So I wanted to share it with you all. And basically it just indicates if the box was handled in a rough way. So obviously Chicago Music Exchange boxes it all up. They inspect the instrument. Uh, they slap the shock indicator on the outside. It goes to UPS. And then if that shock indicator is red, it says, hey, this might've been handled a little bit roughly. Uh, be careful when you open it, do a real thorough inspection. Well, as the next picture will suggest, there was actual footprint on the box that, I'm, <laughs> that happened in transit. <laughs> and I, as soon as I saw that, the shock indicator was red, my wheels started turning. I was like, oh man, this is what's in there, what's in there? So I waited the appropriate amount of time and I dove into the box and they packaged it so well. It wasn't moving, it was super secure. I opened the case. They had the neck, uh, the headstock was totally wrapped in bubble wrap. To it wasn't moving at all inside the case. They even laid a, 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 um, a, like a fretboard protector on top of the fretboard, just a cardboard little strip, little Chicago Music Exchange strip to keep the strings from banging into the fretboard during transit. I mean, I, overall, I think the shipping experience here was a 10 out of 10, a 12 out of 10. So a huge thanks to the folks at Chicago Music Exchange. I mean, it came in even with a, a, a little check card saying that the action had been checked, everything was checked, it was polished, it was all cleaned up before shipping. Uh, I'm just over the moon about my experience at Chicago Music Exchange. And a huge thank you to the folks in the shipping department at Chicago Music Exchange. I don't know if they ever get the credit that they deserve. And also to Carl K uh, in the acoustic department there. There's actually two Carl Ks there, but this is Carl K-I-M-M-O-N, Kimmon, I think is how you, how you spell his last name. Uh, he was super patient, incredible uh, help. He is a, 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 has a vast array of knowledge and uh, he sat with me for like three hours while I played guitars and uh, helped me come to a decision. He played guitars for me so I could hear him. And uh, so huge thanks to Carl at the Chicago Music Exchange. Uh, you guys totally rock and I really, really appreciate it. So no, that's my small win. And I'd love to hear some small wins from, from the folks uh, watching Acoustic Tuesday. All right, let's do it. <laughs> All right. So small wins. The the first small wins from Acoustic Tuesday viewers of 2019. Tony. Oh, I, I, it's all like it keeps circling back that it's a new year. Yeah. This it, is exciting. It takes a bit. Remember in school when it would take you like oh. a couple weeks because you kept writing the date and, and, and the writing checks when people wrote checks. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here are small wins from Acoustic Tuesday viewers. First one comes from Jamie Billy. I recently joined Spotify to make up a list of music for my brother's wedding, and I remembered Acoustic Tuesday has a list of artists featured on the show. <laughs> it's great. I've been listening to it for the last two weeks, and I have favorited several artists. Awesome. Pretty soon all of them will be favorited. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's way cool. Uh, next small win come from, comes from Kismet. Uh, I have a different kind of small win. I wore my guitar arsenal t-shirt to my martial arts class, and my instructor looked it over and said, that's an awesome arsenal. <laughs> that's, all right. That's, that's a major guitar geek move. Yeah. When you, take, when, you're like, when you go to like your martial arts class or somewhere other than a guitar place, yeah. you're wearing your guitar arsenal shirt. It's amazing what happens. I'm sure there's a martial arts movie out there where a, a battle scene involves a guitar as a prop. Oh, uh, I'm positive. And hopefully it's like one of those old ones. Yeah. With cheesy, like, special effects. <laughs> <laughs> Not like the one that... Sorry. Never mind. Okay, yeah. I digress. <laughs> okay, next small win comes from John N. Hi, John N. Uh, tuning in from the furthest eastern point in England called Lowestoft. Whoa, cool. The furthest eastern point. Okay, all right, gotcha. So he's close to us. Kind of. Eastern. Yeah. We're West. Yeah, but... Okay. <laughs> my small win was my Anyways. biggest. Thanks to you two. On episode 1864, you explained open detuning. Oh, I tried cool. it, loved it, and I haven't put, my, put down my guitar since. I heard about uh, this. 
Now, I heard about open tunings before, but no one had explained what can be done with them. Thank you. Great show. Heck yeah. Awesome. That's killer. Uh, next small win comes from, uh, forgive me, uh, Shir- Shirig D. Small win uh, for Tony. I recently received my astonishing custom bourgeois LDBO 12 fret Coca Bolo that Matt helped me build. Awesome. And while picking the back set for it, we were down to two sets. One is on my guitar now, and the other one is going to be on your guitar. <laughs> I, I just think it's an awesome coincidence, and you're going to have your jaw dropped when you see it in person. Congrats, Tony, and thank you so much for uh, Acoustic Life. So if I understood that comment in a correct fashion, uh huh, he was building a custom guitar with Matt from Eddie's Guitars in St. Louis. Correct, a bourgeois. Right. Bourgeois. And he was picking out Coco Bolo back and sides. Correct. Yeah, okay. And he chose a set, but the other set that was in the running for him was the set that I chose for my custom guitar? Yes. Am I interpreting that correct? And while picking the back set for it, we were down to two sets. One is on my guitar, and the other is going to be on your guitar. <laughs> it's, it's like our guitars are brothers. Totally. Or sisters. Totally. Maybe brother-sister. I don't know. Right. That's pretty awesome. That's I don't even cool. have my guitar yet, and it has a story already. I know. This is rad. I know. Well, thanks for leaving that comment. That's awesome. So, Tony, there's our small wins for today. Fantastic. Um, but as does pop up from time to time, I have two You Know Your Guitar Geeks when. Excellent. You, wait, You Know You're a Guitar Geek when. Whens. Two of them. Yeah. Whens. <laughs> okay. So, first one comes from VW Beetle. Another great show, guys. Uh, any suggestions for local guitar stores to see while uh, my family's vacationing in Savannah, Georgia? Oh. Now, we'll be there uh, day after Christmas. So, I thought I'd... Uh, do another vlog for you. Nice. And then he ties that into, you know your guitar geek when each family vacation must include a jam session in a locally owned guitar store. And you all you do is walk out of the store with smiles, memories, the store's branded picks. And I think <laughs> he awesome. didn't he didn't write this, uh-huh. but if your story is any indicator, uh-huh. you also walk out with a new guitar. <laughs> that, can, that can happen. Yes. That can happen. It's one of the, you know, it's a... Um, and what I do think, they call those? A, uh, um, what's the word? Occupational hazard. Mm. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Okay. <laughs> um, and I think you might have made a comment to him on the comments. So if you, you know, again, I always encourage people to look at the other comments on there. There are tons of them, tons of useful information and small wins and tons of encouraging stuff. Yeah, oh, on that, I, I don't know if there's a shop in Savannah, Georgia that I, I'm aware of. There's one that just popped into my head now. I think it's called Maple Leaf or Maple Street Music. But that might not even be in Georgia. I might be making that up. Okay. Uh. Well, I can tell you something about Savannah, Georgia. Um, Savannah, Georgia is the most haunted city in the United States. Seriously? Yeah. That sounds amazing. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm right on that. Thanks, Noah. Yeah, you're welcome. (laughs) And our second one comes from Buck, who says, You know you're an acoustic guitar geek when you identify the song of my people meaning guitarists, guitar geeks, as the sound of a guitar pick bouncing around the inside of your guitar as you shake it upside down above your head to get your pick out. <laughs> now, Tony. That's good. That's good. We know that's a common thing that unites us all guitar geeks. It's true. Um, I think at some point you should show the, the tried and true method of getting, oh, of getting your pick that's a great idea. out of... Your sound hole. That's an awesome idea. Yeah. Because there is. Noah and I have talked about this back and forth because Noah used to teach uh, in-person lessons, as did I. And the topic came up at one point, like, man, what what do you do when when a pick falls on the guitar? And sure enough, our our, uh, approaches are very, very similar. Yeah. And they work nearly 100% of the time. I would say about 99.8. Sure do. Which is good enough for me. Yeah. Heck yeah. Good enough for me. (laughs) And that's our... Sorry, go ahead. Please, I don't want to interrupt you. No, I was going to say, was that was that your list of Guitar Geek wins? Yes, sir, it was. All right. Well, if you're sitting out there and you're thinking, I got a funny Guitar Geek win, I have a small win I want to share, uh, please leave those in the comments. Put hashtag small win. Go ahead and describe your small win. It could be big. It could be small. You could have changed your strings. You could have went to a life-changing show. You could have played with a buddy, a neighbor, a friend. 
whoever the case is, whoever it is, we want to know about it. We want to know about your small win. Just hashtag small win and then go ahead and describe it in the comments. And the same is true for you know you're a guitar geek when. Put hashtag you know you're a guitar geek when and then go ahead and finish that statement. And speaking of Guitar Geeks, uh, I got two of our fellow Guitar Geeks submitted guitar signals this week. And uh, we're going to have a look. Speaking of Georgia, you know, a lot of Georgia action going on. Both of these guitar signals are from Georgia. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. We must have an Acoustic Tuesday contingent in, maybe, in Georgia. Yeah, maybe there's more guitar-related things in Georgia than we realize. Yeah, apparently they're haunted, too. Yeah. All right, this, <laughs> this first one comes from John G. He is from Atlanta, Georgia. And he says, here's my current guitar signal, guys. Back row is a 1999 Taylor 712 CE next to a circa 1970 Lyle, a Japanese Gibson knockoff, which is his road guitar and the one that he's had the most of his life. Front row is the latest addition to the collection, a 2016 Martin D18, congratulations, uh, next to a Laurel Parlor guitar that is untunable at present. Then, center front is a 1960 silver tone parlor guitar for display reasons only. And lastly, my fave of the whole group, a 1999 Taylor 314 CE. That's an awesome guitar signal, John. Thank you for sharing that. And the next guitar signal comes from, I'm going to try my best to pronounce this town, Dalonega, Georgia. This is, comes from a Mike P. And he says, starting on the left uh, are an Ibanez ART300, a PV Delta Blues 115 amp. Below the PV is a Fender Acoustasonic 150. Next is a Michael Kelly Triad 10E. Uh, next, my favorite guitar, a 1998 Tacoma Road King. Then a Rainsong HWS 1002, a Siegel Entourage Grand Rustic, a Kala Ukulele, and a Flint Hill Banjo. I want to thank uh, all the folks in our Georgia contingent for sending uh, guitar signals in, both John and Mike. Uh, and of course, if you're sitting there thinking, man, I want to share my guitar signal on Acoustic Tuesday, it's a new year, it's 2019, let's kick it off right. Let's share a guitar signal. Uh, it's really easy to do. First, you gotta get yourself a guitar signal shirt. There's a link right beneath the YouTube episode. You can click on that, order yourself a shirt. Next, put that shirt on, take a picture amongst all of your guitars, your guitar signal, if you will. And then third, please submit it at AcousticLife.tv. When you go to Acoustic Life, when you go to AcousticLife.tv, there's a link in the top menu that says submit. You can submit your picture, describe your guitar signal, and you'll be featured in an upcoming episode of Acoustic Tuesday. All right. I felt like the Micro Machines guy there for a second. Remember him? Oh, yeah. He, was, I, he would talk so fast on Saturday mornings. And on the commercials and whatever else he did. Yeah, I'm just like, I would be watching cartoons and up would go a Micro Machines ad. You know? And he would just fire away. I would be like, whoa. I'd like to see him talk to the, uh, the, um, what's the guy? The, what guy? Ah, uh, it just left my brain. What guy? The, the Scat Man. Scat man. Be a bum ba dum pop. Oh, be a bum ba dum pop. I'm the scat man. <laughs> and on that note, ladies and gentlemen, my checklist says I should ask you to share this show. So if you want to uh, uh, share with your friends the the banter that happens between Noah and I, and of course, most importantly, the acoustic life-inducing uh, content that we share here on the show, uh, please share the show with them. If you know of a guitar geek that has not seen Acoustic Tuesday, if you, have, if you know of a guitar geek or a friend that would love this show but they have not seen it yet, please share the show with them. You could send them their favorite episode on YouTube. You could send them to AcousticLife.tv. There's a whole bunch of stuff to dig into, but please, please, please from Noah, from myself, please share this show. The whole goal is to unite as many guitar geeks as possible. All right, on to our last and final item. And this one's really exciting because you know what happens? At the end of the holidays, there's this void, right? Families probably left. For some, that's a relief. For some, it's sad, you know? Different sides of the coin, right? But usually during the holidays, we're so occupied with the, with the, the nightly goings on, we always have something, seemingly something to do. When the holidays are over, it's a new year, all of a sudden, those nights are just, they feel empty. There's a void we need to fill. And I can't think of a better thing to fill that void with than bourbon, than uh, actually music documentaries, okay? Music documentaries are the most uplifting, inspirational things you can watch and really informational. If you're a trivia dork like me, you love music documentaries. Well, this one that I'm gonna share with you is one that I think you will dig. If you love bluegrass music, if you love artists that define entire genres, if you love icon artists, this documentary is for you. It is called Revival, The Sam Bush Story, and 
If you guessed it's about Sam Bush, the amazing mandolin player, you are correct. Sam Bush created an entire genre, uh, newgrass music, and is still playing and is just, um, talk about one of the most inspirational players. He is just a fantastic player and somebody that I think you should know more about. In fact, uh, this, this documentary looks amazing. I have not watched it yet, but Whitney's out of town tonight, so... Guess what I get to watch tonight? <laughs> this documentary. <laughs> so without further ado, let's take a look at the trailer. Finally, Chris, we have it down to a, a beautiful thing. <laughs> As Chris said, now the music can start. Please welcome the king of Telluride, Mr. Sam Bush. Sam Bush is a father of a whole genre of music, newgrass. And I think he's an American treasure, I really do. When I heard him play, I was like, this is what I want to do. This guy is a badass. I know that there was a lot of pressure on Sam. Are you the next Bill Monroe? Sam had the guts and the vision to say, no, I'm going to be the first Sam Bush, though. I was hard-headed enough that if I was going to play music, that wasn't the music I wanted to play. I respect bluegrass music enough to not screw around with it like Sam does. The Newgrass Revival is probably responsible for the bluegrass going the way that it's going, away from traditional bluegrass. Yeah. It was something about the generation gap. They were a little jealous of their thing, wanted to keep it to themselves. It wasn't as melodic as I normally like. But you couldn't help but be uh, just really impressed with the fact that they were pushing the boundaries. I mean, I, I didn't feel like they were worried about what anybody thought whatsoever, and that's such a beautiful thing. Can't stop now. I hated when the Newgrass Revival broke up. And Sam said, well, you can't quit, I quit. I didn't have anywhere to go and nothing to do. I know his heart was broke. My heart was definitely broke. It still hurts. There are many times when Sam Bush goes to perform in front of an audience and they may not know who he is. Well, I don't really know his, much of his music. I don't, I don't own any records. Everybody say, hi, Sam! But when he gets done, they sure know. Daryl and I had hit records. That's, that's different. But Sam had to do it all live. That's an amazing achievement. There's only one Sam Bush. <laughs> And I like to be around him. <laughs> All right, so this documentary came available on November 1st, 2018. Uh, it came available for digital download, uh, digital rental, I believe all through Amazon. So if you go to acousticlife.tv forward slash AT71, uh, you'll be able to see uh, a direct link to go ahead and um, rent that through Amazon or download it through Amazon, whatever, however you best take in movies. Uh, it, that link is there for you to check out. Now, what I, what I am so excited about is not only the subject matter of this documentary, Sam Bush, obviously, uh, but also just the cast of characters that are interviewed. I mean, you got Jerry Douglas, Emmy Lou Harris, Ricky Skaggs, Bela Fleck, amongst many, many others, Chris Thiele, David Grisman. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So I think... Uh, um, I'm super excited to watch it tonight, and I think that uh, the, the I, I want to give credits where credits due. The directors, uh, Wayne Franklin and Chris Wheeler, I think uh, they've done a great job. At least judging by the trailer, it seems like uh, they offer up a really tour, uh, a great tour of of Sam's life, his influence, and um, his continued craft. I mean, the guy's he's amazing. He's he's his right hand is is amazing. If you technically, he's one of the most proficient pickers I've ever seen in my life. So uh, I think it's something that we all should watch as Guitar Geeks together, kick off 2019 in the right direction with some musical entertainment. So again, that's uh, Revival, The Sam Bush Story, and that's available for rent on Amazon or download on Amazon. 
All right. That pretty much wraps up Acoustic Tuesday, episode 71. Noah, our very first episode of 2019. It's 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 tired. Wow. It's tired because it stayed up all night, rang in the new year, it made resolutions. We have it like, maybe made some decisions that it didn't want to make. And we have like 51 more to look forward to this. 51 more. It's not a leap year, is it? Ah, uh, that's a good question. I have no I idea. Know. Me neither. We'll know in the comments. Somebody will tell. Somebody will say. <laughs> All right. Well, before before we put Acoustic Tuesday episode 71 to bed uh, for good, let's quickly revisit our Guitar Geek trivia question. Here was your Guitar Geek trivia question. In what year did Bob Dylan release his very first album? Was it A, 1959, B, 1960, C, 1962, or D, 1966? Well, if you answered C, 1962, you were absolutely 100% correct. Released on March 19th, 1962 by Columbia Records, Bob Dylan's self-titled album was his debut album. Produced by Columbia's legendary talent scout, John H. Hammond, who signed Dylan to the label, the album features folk standards plus two original compositions, Talk in New York and Song to Woody. And in my opinion, that's actually one of my favorite Dylan albums. I mean, I know Blood on the Tracks is phenomenal as well, as are many of the other albums, but that one in particular, um, there's just a rawness there because it's, yeah, young Bob Dylan singing classic folk tunes, two of his own. I mean, it's just a, it's an album that is, uh, if you haven't heard it, if you don't own it, you, you, you absolutely have to, especially as an acoustic music appreciator, appreciator and a uh, uh, guitar geek. So Noah, that's it. Our, awesome. our first one of 2019 is in the books. Cool. But let's take a sneak peek into next week to see what's going to happen next week on Acoustic Tuesday. Uh, next week on Acoustic Tuesday, learn about some guitars that are great for travel and uber comfortable. Listen to a guitar fiddle duo soaked with harmony and an exercise that will unlock accuracy, finger independence, and fretboard confidence. I cannot wait for you to see that. Make sure to tune into Acoustic Tuesday every Tuesday. You can catch it at 10 a.m. Mountain Time on YouTube. And of course, for your guitar geek fix, in between Tuesdays, go to AcousticLife.tv, do a deep dive on anything we've ever featured on Acoustic Tuesday, and believe me, it's a great place to visit if it's like 3 p.m. and you're at the office, the boss says you have to be there, but you got no work to do, go to AcousticLife.tv, you'll get lost for hours. And if you're at work, you'll get paid for it. So thank you so much for watching. We wish you the absolute best 2019. And uh, from Noah, from myself, we wish you a great we wish you a great week. We'll see you next Tuesday, and uh, cheers to you. Guitar Geeks Unite.